Hello and welcome to episode number 586 of Smart Podcast Trashy Books. I'm Sarah Wendell and with me today are Amanda and Valerie Bowman. Now, last week in the ads and features episode for the May 2014 issue of Romantic Times for our Romantic Times Rewind series, the cover feature was all about Valerie Bowman, her latest book, and there was a mention in the article about her appearance on Say Yes to the Dress Atlanta in 2014. Now, you might remember this clip. Romance novelist Valerie lives through her characters. Lily, I think I wrote her a little bit with myself in mind. And thought by dressing like one, she had penned a quick ending to her bridal story. Oh, it's just so romantic. It's perfect. Oh, not at all. Valerie's the baby of the family. So naturally, she's going to listen to her big sister. Sister's dress is a dropped waist gown with a sparkling beaded bodice and a full ruffled skirt. No! No way. (laughs) I think this would get edited out of my book. Good. It's bling. It's fru. No. I love it. This dress is definitely taking out of her comfort zone. I really love the first one. So maybe go back in your first love. That's not going to be the case. Nobody can mess with your head like a sister. You can live in a fictional world the rest of the time. And unless Valerie comes up with a character that stands up for herself, she's headed for an unhappy ending. So I reached out to Valerie because, would you believe we had a few questions about this whole episode and the clip itself? Oh, so many questions. And Valerie was so cool. She came on to talk to us all about the details. We're going to talk about weddings. We're going to talk about dresses. We're going to talk about reality TV. We're going to take a side discussion into The Real Housewives, Scandival, and $17,000 sunglasses. This is a very goofy, silly, fun episode. And I am so glad that Amanda suggested I reach out to Valerie. Plus, do not miss the show notes because Valerie sent us a picture of her wedding. And it's just wonderful. I knew doing the Romantic Times Rewind would be fun. I didn't realize it would be this much fun. So thank you for going on this very strange journey with us. I also want to say a special hello and thank you to our Patreon community who is playing a major part in making this whole series possible. I have a compliment. I love this so much. To Sue R., You are the human embodiment of the feeling of walking into a gelato parlor, seeing perfectly rippled brand new trays of all your favorite flavors and knowing that you can get some of each. You are the joy of gelato in human form is what I'm saying. Thank you for being part of the Patreon and a special hello to Amanda S for joining our community so recently. If you like the show and you value what we're doing, and if you really enjoy the Romantic Times Rewind episodes, which are so much fun, have a look at our Patreon. It is super easy to join. Monthly pledges start at $1, and every pledge is deeply appreciated. And make sure that every episode has a transcript hand compiled by Garlic Knitter. Hey, Garlic Knitter. Thank you so much to the Patreon community for their support. And thank you for thinking about it. If you're not part of the Patreon, have a look at patreon.com slash smart bitches. Support for this episode comes from Lumi Deodorant. It is finally cooling off. The weather is no longer like soup, but I still love summery scents, which is why I love the toasted coconut deodorant from Lumi. And Lumi makes it easy to feel comfortable and smell so lovely. We have a special offer. New customers get $5 off Lumi's starter pack with code Sarah30 at lumipodcast.com. That's L-U-M-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T dot com. As I've mentioned, my whole family really likes Lumi. I use the solid stick deodorant, as I mentioned, in toasted coconut. But we, specifically my teenager who ran off with my Lumi starter pack items, also really like the lavender sage scent. Lumi also offers a soft powder scent, minted cucumber, or completely unscented, which is always appreciated. How does it work? Well, some products try to mask odor with fragrance, but Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. It's more like a pre-odorant, and Lumi can control odor for up to 72 hours. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like a mini body wash or deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code SARAH30 at lumipodcast.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumipodcast.com and use code SARAH30. 
All right, it's time to talk about Yes and Dress and Reality TV. On with the conversation with me, Amanda and Valerie Bowman. I am Valerie Bowman. I am a historical romance novelist. Uh, I think I have about, uh, I think I have maybe 30, 30 plus books uh, out there at this point. Um, yeah, I've been I've been writing since 2011. Um, and I used to be uh, published by New York by St. Martin's Press, but now I'm fully Andy and loving it. That is my... Uh, Welcome to the show. I feel, I feel like this is going to be a gathering of what I like to think of as ye olde romance, old folks home, where we just sit on the porch and rock back and forth and talk about how it used to be back in the day. Yes, 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 I love it. We recently did the May 2014 RT Rewind, and we looked in the magazine. You were the cover story. Do you, yes. you, I'm assuming you remember this issue because it's... It, I it's, do remember it. It's yeah. so cool to be the cover <laughs> story, right? Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I, I absolutely. Why did y'all pick the May two, 2014 to start with? I'm just curious. This is just one you had. Yeah, it's wild. But I yeah. love it. You, you know, my history with RT is that when I was a little girl, my mom, every Friday night, we'd go to Walden Books in the, in the bookstore at the Walden mall. Books. And she, yes, and she would get all these romance novels in the RT. I still remember it. It was paper, it was black and white. It was sitting, I think it might have been free. I don't know as a child, so I wasn't paying for it anyway. But she would get a copy and they were all over her bedroom. Like she just, my mom's bedroom was just romance novels. So <gasps> I remember it when it was like black and white and just, oh, and oh just kind my. of bad font and just, oh yeah. Was, I've only it. seen <laughs> pictures of those. I've never seen the yes. original RT, the Romantic Times yes. newsletter, when it was like actually paper and you folded yes, it up, put it in an envelope yes, and yeah, sent it to me. I've never seen one myself. Yes. Oh, they were lovely. So yeah. was it like a massively big moment for you to be the cover story on this magazine then? It was actually, yes. You know, I was, I've was i been watching Beckham on Netflix, like a ton of people have been watching. And he was talking about how his dad like kind of made him into being a soccer player because he wanted it so bad. And I'm like, I think that was my mom and me being a really novel. He <laughs> was just the biggest fan ever. I mean, she never really told me to do it, but um uh, I feel like I maybe you know to get down some deep psychology. So you're the right you're there. the David Beckham of romance. Yeah, is what I'm hearing. Well, <laughs> I want to say that now. <laughs> That's good. It's probably a step too far, but I just I love that idea that your par- your parent could like just influence you. And I think with romance novels, and my mom for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can now put that on the cover of your books. Like Amanda and I are totally cool with you saying the David Beckham of romance, <laughs> dash, smart bitches. Like you can put that on the cover. It's fine with us. You can have South. Do you think anybody wants that? I don't know. That's funny though. I love it. <laughs> so you were on the cover for your book and you mentioned in the profile, which by the way, was a really good profile. Like one thing I've noticed rereading old issues is when they do a profile of somebody, they they, they had some really interesting questions and, and like the profiles were actually solidly interesting. Yeah. You appeared yeah, yeah. on Say Yes to the Dress Atlanta. Now this is like a little I, paragraph in the article and I don't know if you saw the episode, but we listened to the, we listened to the audio. We listened, like I watched that whole episode and I don't like reality <laughs> TV. It makes my skin hurt because it's just so awkward, but like, oh. okay. How did this appearance happen? How did you end up on Say Yes to the Dress Atlanta? Okay. So actually with some romance novelist friends who, who uh, suggested it. So I was out, um, I got married in uh, two thousand. 13. It was literally our wedding anniversary last uh, night. Yesterday. Oh, hey, congratulations. So, um, congrats. That's 10 yeah, years. 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. Yay. We were like, we're um, <laughs> uh, so we were, I was looking for a dress and I just was posting things out on my, I think, Facebook and just like, what do you think of these dresses? Because that's kind of fun. Um, and what my friend Anna Bennett, who uh, writes for St. Martin's, she said, you know what, you should apply to be on Say Yes to the Dress because you're a romance novelist and that's a good hook. And I was like, really? I never thought about it. But I just Googled. I literally that morning Googled it. There's an application, or at least at the time there was, filled it out. And they called me within a week and said, can you be up here? I think it was a week later and um, bring some people and that's how it happened it was really that fast the whole thing was like from start to finish was like three weeks it was crazy you know the producers that received your application were like yes thank you god (laughs) (laughs) so as a romance author and 
We watched a portion of this episode. Now, Amanda was much more familiar with Say Yes to the Dress Atlanta than I was. This was something you had watched. I'd never seen this before. Um, Yeah, it's definitely like a weekend. Sometimes like I think TLC will have a marathon on and you just lay up on the couch on a Sunday afternoon and watch like eight of them back to back. It's usually usually the consumption watching. It is popcorn watching or Pringles watching, I've heard it called. Yeah. And it It is kind of nice to watch people try on beautiful dresses. Like beautiful dresses are fun. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's just fun. And give like your own opinion to yourself. Like, mm, I wouldn't wear that. Or like, <laughs> I, I don't like that fit around the bust as if like if there's anyone here listening to me or like cares about my opinion. I'll say this to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's fun. It's a fun, it's a fun show to watch. I remember when my sister-in-law got married in 2019 and she wanted to do like a a family, like we were all visiting for Passover or something. And she's like, well, I want to go dress shopping with everyone. And I was like, oh, okay. Like I didn't have any idea why she wanted me to come dress shopping. And the dress store that we went to in Virginia, it was set up with like yes or no placards and lots of like decorations. And we were supposed to be involved. Like it was like an in-person say yes to the yeah. dress thing. And I had no idea that that had infiltrated bridal boutiques, but it was like a live version yeah. of we all sit on this couch and she comes out in a dress. And the thing I remember most clearly, and this happened to you too, is they use these giant friggin' clips to hold the dress to your body. Yeah. You look like from the back, you look like a construction project. Like there's these giant clamps <laughs> holding the dress on. And I'm like, is that comfortable? Oh my gosh. So we watched a portion of the show on the on the podcast. I've linked to the episode because I found it online. And we were we were a little shocked about some of the editing decisions made for this sequence, especially with your sister. What was the family? What was your family's reaction? And were you guys coached to create conflict? Like, I, like my stomach hurt a little bit with some of the conflict. There, in this. there were a lot of puns. Oh, like a so lot of puns. many puns! Please <laughs> tell me you were like, oh wow, yikes! I didn't even hear the puns until I watched that. But well, some of them I didn't. I didn't know the the extent of the punnage until I watched it myself. <laughs> Um, but they did not coach us to have conflict, but what they did is they edited it to have conflict. Oh. And as a storyteller, I can't blame them. So I get why they did it. But yeah, my sister was not happy because they, they made it seem like she thought really ugly dresses were pretty. And she'd never, basically they'd ask her about a pretty dress and say, how'd you like it? And she'd say, oh, I liked it. And then they put that clip with the ugliest dress ever. Oh my gosh. So they made it look like your sister had bad taste in wedding dresses? (gasps) Yeah, it was not cool. She must have been very upset when it aired. Yeah, she was not happy. She's actually never seen it, but she's had enough people tell Tell her her about it that it was bad (laughs) that she, so I respect her decision to not watch it. I really wish I would have. My mother in law was on it with me, and uh, she would have, she's since passed away, but uh, she would have been so good to fight with because she would have been into it and just not cared she but my sister cared and it was kind of a it was a bad scene so (laughs) I wish we would have kind of changed the dynamic but when you go you don't really know who they're going to have you fight with other than if you've seen this if you've seen it before you know it's always family members that they have you fight with but my mother loves family so Oh my gosh. Yeah, and they, it, and they, it, it was so good. They really played into the, well, you know, you, you always, your sister knows how to push your buttons. And I was like, oh my gosh, of course. <laughs> yeah, like, they, do. they have to make a story. Otherwise, it's boring. But right. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely uh, was uh, contrived. A little contrived. So your sister is <laughs> not today. actually a reality show villain, is what you're saying here. She is not, and she has very, very good taste. So, you know what? I think that's what made her the most mad is that she didn't want America, <laughs> which I get. I totally get. I, I mean, I can believe it, and I cannot believe it that they would edit together <laughs> her positive comments. And the one that she, like, the one that she was praising was the one where it was just like a tight bodice, and then just ruffles for days. It was Bloof. Just, yeah, it was, no, it was awful. Yeah. And in fact, my, fr- the worst part was my friend who had come, one of my friends, she was thought she hadn't really seen the show. So she didn't really know what to do, but she thought part of it was to pick the worst dresses. So she, that, that was actually one of her crazy dresses she picked just to be funny. And then they turned that into my sister. Well, I did. It was bad. 
Oh that my gosh. I feel like we need to have your sister on the show just so she could like defend herself. Um, what a bad edit she got. Oh my gosh. It was bad. It was, you know, and I've heard since then, I've never been on one of these like remodel shows, but I, you know, I'm sure you've read, they say that like behind the scenes, they only really fix up like one wall and the rest of the house looks like crap after they leave. I mean, reality shows where shows are just they are what they are but so i yeah. i would watch a show where it's like kind of a mix between say yes to the dress and then like supermarket sweep where you've got like five <laughs> minutes to find the ugliest dress in this giant dress warehouse and like the winner <laughs> takes over <laughs> <laughs> i would be <laughs> i would be so good at that though because i so when I got married, I had my sister as my maid of honor, my sister's-in-law as bridesmaids, and two of my friends from college as bridesmaids. And I can barely dress myself, yeah. so I cannot dress other people. <laughs> That's how I am. And I told them, just get a dress and make it blue. Buy something you like. All blues go together. It's going to be fine. We'll tie you together with the flowers, and I'm really not that worried about it. Because, again, I can barely <laughs> dress myself. If you told me to go into a bridal shop and find the ugliest dress, I would be able to do that in like three seconds because I have no concept of what looks good on the hanger versus what looks good on me. I would pick the right. worst dresses for myself just as a default. I would win this show so easily. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I have no taste in clothing, nor do I care that much about clothing. So I'm always just wearing like whatever. So did you come up with the ideas of having like you, um, like in the show, you're you're sort of channeling your characters. Like this is what one of my characters would wear. And, and everyone was like, no, you have to come back down to reality. And I was like, well, first of all, that's kind of harsh because clearly no, this was, was something they were it, building, right? Yeah, they did. I guess that was their kind of little thing they wanted. Because if I remember correctly, I haven't seen that show in a minute, but it, there was like a Barbie Barbie woman on the other half of the show where she wanted to be Barbie. So they kind of had their premise in place of they wanted me to kind of seem like I wished I was a character for my book, which no, I don't, but I get it. But you, you, a little, you like <laughs> having penicillin? Idea. You like having modern medicine, penicillin and hot water whenever you want? Oh my goodness. Exactly. So I was kind of scared. I could, I heard them always saying that and I, I was kind of scared they were going to make me seem like a, just a wackadoo who, you know, wished I was a Regency character in my own books. It's not how I feel, but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was, that was their kind of little premise. That, they that was their hook. I am telling you, yeah. you filled out that application and a producer was just like, thank you. It is like Christmas. To <laughs> yes. <it> was, <laughs> you, you were perfect for that show, but my goodness, the edit. Whew. So do you remember the dresses that you tried on other than the big, like the big, roughly big, big, big one? There were two that were really beautiful and and Amanda was telling me when we were yeah. rewatching it that generally there's one you like and then there's one the the guests like and then there's a like a third one that everyone likes and that's generally the setup. Do you remember that or is it all filmed out of order and you don't know which dress is going to be the one at the end? It's filmed out of order with the ugly dresses and the conflict dresses. Like I didn't know what they were going to do with all of that. But the one that I eventually loved and everyone loved and that I actually purchased um that one we I did really love, and that that was real. I picked it, I loved it, and I was planning to wear it. But then we actually, what happened? I did give it away to a reader because what happened was when I bought that dress, we really hadn't planned our wedding yet. I knew I needed a dress, but our wedding ended up being extremely tiny and informal, so that dress would have looked insane <laughs> on, at our at little tiny so wedding. You didn't so even wear I it? it away. I didn't wear it, but I gave it away to a young woman who really appreciated it and who did wear it. I would have worn it, but my wedding just turned, we, we just took a different direction with the wedding. It wasn't like I didn't plan to wear it, but then it just would have been silly at the wedding that we ended up having. You had like to buy it? You had to buy the dress? Even yeah. though you're on the show, you... Okay, I I am... Amanda, are you shocked? I am shocked. Yeah, I thought, like, because you come on the show and bring your family, they comp you the dress. Right? Like, you go on no, The Bachelor, I, you get that w engagement ring for free. Do you? Do they get... Do you get a, you the can, Bachelor? An engagement ring? 
<laughs> I thought I always thought that. Oh, he's like, s- can I write in on that show? Can I <laughs> see? I I always thought on the Bachelor when they're like the, the and the rings provided by Neil Lane or whatever. I don't think yeah. these these are guys that these are these people are a bunch of Instagram influencers. They don't have Neil Lane diamond money. I figured the diamond was part of the you know that and all the free travel from ABC and the booze. Like the and the- I would like to know if they get to keep it, it especially if it falls apart because they so often do. I want to know that now. But no, I mean. And also, The Bachelor has a way bigger budget than just to try I mean, to live on true. there. So, you had so, to uh, buy the dress? I am shocked. I did get a discount. Um, and I think it was a generous, I think, I want to say it was 50%. But that might have been because that dress came from like the the 50% off room. Now that I think <laughs> about it. But it was beautiful. I think it was, it was gorgeous. Like they, according to them, it was like last years are old and what do I care about that I just thought it was beautiful so that's why it was already on sale and then they did give me a discount for being on the show but no nothing was paid for like w- they gave us a, a hotel room discount not even a free hotel room to stay in Atlanta no nothing like no meals or anything. it was just if you want to stay in Atlanta here's a discount and yeah. that's wild I am shocked yeah yeah I'm shocked <laughs> yeah, I think you're so Honestly, I think there's so many people who just want to be on television yeah. for fame's sake, I guess. Not that you're famous after you're on that show. I've had a few people recognize me, but just a handful. But, I mean, I did it, obviously, because I have uh, uh, romance novels that I would like people to know about. But if I was just a person getting married, you wouldn't catch me dead on that show. <laughs> because I don't want to just be famous for the take a fame. I don't know. Some people do that. Some people do. I mean, it makes perfect sense for a novelist because that is absolutely your audience. The same people like Amanda, like Amanda said, the same people who are chilling on the couch, like in their, in alone in their room voting on your wedding dress. Those are absolutely likely to be romance readers. It makes sense from a free marketing perspective, but I am shocked that like they didn't even cover the cost of the dress. That's, but uh, Mm. that's just, wow. I, there are so many people out there who just want to be on TV. It's, it's true. That's why there's so many reality shows. Yep. yep. <laughs> so you didn't end up wearing the dress and you ended up giving it away on, as I saw that part yeah. in the article, you were like, sign up for my yeah. newsletter, email me. I'm giving the dress away. First of all, that's so generous. Yeah. That is a really oh, well. beautiful, generous giveaway. Do you know yeah, what, who, well. who won it? What did, did they send you a picture? Did you get to see the, see the dress in their wedding? Yeah, I have, um, her email address, I can't remember the girl's name, but she was a young bride. She was in Indiana. Her mother thanked me profusely for it. I didn't get to see the wedding or any of it, but um, I I think I went to a good home and I was glad somebody got to wear it. That's and, so lovely. Yeah. I, I have not been married, uh, so I don't have a wedding dress story, but uh, my mom was remarried in the early 90s. And her wedding dress came with a big hat yep. and had little pearl buttons all the way down the back of it. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was like in some community play in high school <laughs> and I was like playing a runaway bride. And I'm like, oh, I can just borrow my mom's wedding dress because yeah. she still had it. And I fit into it and everything. But having to do like a quick change and someone behind the scenes trying to get all the little pearl buttons. buttons in a row yeah that i that was like intense i was sweating like please yeah. please just make sure nothing's gonna fall out you don't have to do every button <laughs> nothing's gonna fall but out. i did <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time i've worn a wedding dress and it was my mom's and i think she still has it but weirdly i feel like that style of dress was very popular in the early 90s oh yes oh yes because my former roommate, her mom, who looks similar to my mom, had like the exact same wedding dress with the big hat yep. tucked to the side. Yep. yep. A tilted long hat. Sleeve, like big. Yep. Tilted hat. Long sleeve dress with pearl buttons down the back. Wow. Yep. That was a whole look. Oh, yeah. And the thing about wedding dresses is that they are so impractical. You can't even go to the bathroom unassisted. Oh. I have been known. You, you know how you go through a phase where like, You've got like five weddings in one year because everyone you know is getting married. I would go up to brides I didn't know and I'd be like, listen, do you have someone designated to help you pee? Because if you do not, you come and find me. You don't even need to know my name. I've done this before. 
I can't pee in my own wedding dress. So I know you can't. You know, I'm looking at this dress and it's like miles long. I'm like, listen, you just come find me. I will help you use the bathroom. We will never speak of this again. I'll never talk again. I'm like, you don't even have to remember my name. I don't even need a thank you note. Just, I, it's yeah, so yeah, impractical. Just, the yeah, thing about the dress you ultimately chose, and I'm kind of bummed you didn't get to wear it. Like that's, you went through all of that. Your, your poor sister got this terrible reality TV edit. You didn't get to wear it. The dress you I picked know. was so simple and elegant. It's so pretty. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. We actually, t- my my husband and I actually were like, well, we should have a bigger wedding just so we can wear the dress. I mean, we had that talk and then we're like, okay, that's a little crazy. <laughs> that's not the wedding we want. <laughs> so what did you wear to your wedding? I actually wore a very simple, I bought it off the internet. I didn't even try it on until I got it. Uh, just a really simple lace uh, dress with, that was like a lo- like knee length, I even think, and kind of a uh, three quarter sleeve. It was very oh. simple <laughs> compared to the other one. Would you feel comfortable sending me a picture so I can put it in the show notes? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah that would be lovely. I'll that. include that in the show notes so people can see the, the, the dress, the <laughs> actual dress. Um, yeah. And how is your sister? Is 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 she okay? <laughs> <laughs> she's okay. Yeah, she's okay. She we we honestly, uh, all joking aside, we don't we we don't talk about that. We <laughs> we can't. Uh, she she's not. She's still to this day not happy about it, and I um, I apologize profusely. And I hope it was absolutely her. not your it choice, though. That up. was all the producers. Having having learned a lot yeah. about reality TV, the producers make some weird decisions behind the scenes. They sure do. Yeah, I just wish it had been my mother-in-law. She would have enjoyed it. My sister was like, oh. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry for that. That part stinks. Yeah, but you know, when we went on reality TV, we should have been expecting that. I always think that. It's like, what do we expect, you know? Yeah, reality TV is one of those things where like, once you're on it, I feel like the finished product is out of your hands, unfortunately. Absolutely. Yeah. And I actually do like watching reality TV. Like I was all up in this scandal ball all summer. Oh, oh my God. God. We got to talk about that. Oh my gosh. I was so deep into that. Um, but I know from having just been on one episode, of one, <laughs> you know, it's all edited, but oh my gosh, scandal ball. I could not get into that. I mean, <laughs> Ariana deserved better. For sure. Sorry, Absolutely. And that little mustache. <laughs> First of all, the mustache, we should have known he was headed downhill when he even started <laughs> with the mustache. The mustache was proof that he could not be trusted. It's so specifically curved. Like it's so it? well groomed. Like, you know how you know how you see a romance cover model and they've got like 19 abs and the biggest pecs you ever saw. And the first thing I think yeah. is, OK, well, that is at least six hours in the gym every day, nonstop. So clearly you do not have right. time to be running a company and harassing your secretary and doing whatever else it is you do in this novel. It's shifting yeah. into a wolf and becoming an alien like you don't have time for that. You got to work on those abs. That's a lot of upkeep right there. So you look at that mustache. You know that it's like two hours in the bathroom every morning, just, just, just perfectly. Like that's his. Like, that's a yeah. lot of investment into a mustache. That I, that's a questionable. That's a questionable decision right there. And he's kind of like that. I mean, I've been watching that show, uh, Vanderpump Rules, since day one. I mean, I've just been yeah. on board with it. So he's like that. But oh, Ariana is so much better than he is. Just that's all I have I'm to a say. I'm a Real Housewives girl yes, for which sure. which real then, housewives like, though there's many flavors oh, okay i've seen <laughs> probably almost every real housewives like spinoff i will yeah. go on the record and say some of the best television i've ever watched was season two of the real housewives of new jersey i have heard that okay. that, that the new yeah, jersey the jersey okay. wives is the superior vintage uh or early jersey <laughs> wives is the superior vintage early, of real early, housewives yes it's Again. nuts. I even I have purchased that just that one season on Amazon Prime. That is the only season I physically own. <laughs> it's oh, season of two them. of the Real Housewives of New Jersey. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it was intense for sure. That's probably the one I stuck with the longest. And then like R.I.P. to Real Housewives of Miami. I watched that one a lot. It's I have watched. Oh. Almost all of them. I used to be a fan of New York, but I cannot listen to Ramona even talk. So I had to Ramona say, but... Singer is in a classic oh own, isn't she? I 
can't even listen to her voice at this point in my life. Just I can't. But um, I love the Beverly Hills and the OC, the OG OC. Those are my two that I watch. Um, yeah. I think the only one I haven't really watched was Salt Lake City. Gosh, I was watching that. Yep. Oh, <laughs> speaking I of drama, my gosh, I did yeah, watch I the first. I want to say four or five episodes of The Real Housewives of Dubai. Dubai is almost like this weird sort of cousin to a show that was called Ladies of London, which was basically Real oh, Housewives yes. of London. Yes, yes. I there was that. this, that woman on Ladies of London, it's not Catherine. But Caroline she, Stanberry. Caroline, oh. such a witch oh. in Ladies of London. Yeah. She's and then good she TV. Like, she pieced out of London and moved to Dubai. And became the okay. main housewife. She's the foundation housewife of Real Housewives of Dubai. <laughs> the thing that's wild is because Dubai has very strict liquor laws, like you're not allowed to drink, you have to get on a boat and go out to sea to drink. So yeah. Caroline's <laughs> bachelorette party is on a boat and they just go out to sea and get Ooh. shit-faced and then come back. All the Real Housewives I'm on board with. Like, I'm just, I'm here for all of it. Just, I have a friend who won't watch it because she's like, I would be jealous of all their stuff. But I'm like, <laughs> I'm like fascinated by all their stuff. Like, oh, one it's time fascinating. I remember one of the women was like, these sunglasses were $17,000. And I was what? Like, I just, can't she was, and it became like a running joke of like, because she would always tell you how much like her sunglasses or her purse cost, like, I without, I, without it being prompted. No, just she would like just an icebreaker. $17,000. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> just, no. And yeah, I'm judging that. So I, I, I'm really trying to be less judgy in my life. But I was like, what the hell are you talking about? I have like $10 Target sunglasses that I've had for 25 years and they're like <laughs> half broken. <laughs> Imagine having like, like sunglasses as a budget line item, you know, it was just like my sunglasses Ooh, budget I, for this year. Just, I'd be so stressed out having 14 or $17,000 sunglasses. It's like, yeah, don't like, touch the them. sunglasses. What are they doing? <laughs> That's a used car. I know. It's so fascinating <laughs> to me. Like at that point, I expect them to come with perks. Like yeah, if I buy these, like, it, it's like when you... When you buy a Peloton and then you buy the subscription service, you get all of this programming, right? So for my yeah, 17,000 yeah. sunglasses, mm -hmm. I want to know that it comes with an automatic all expenses paid vacation where I wear the sunglasses. For $17,000, right. it should it, it, they should transform into a plane and fly me to the <laughs> beach. That's what should happen. I, I agree with that. And that's just one example. They they have all sorts of stuff they are spending money on that I'm just like, what in the world? Like the purses alone, I could just talk all day about all the purses. Oh, purses are wild, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. So, some of them, I mean, I've looked them up. They're like $80,000 purses. I'm yeah, like, like a like a Birkin bag, for oh, example. Yeah. Like I I have like a, was it like a long, long champ? Long uh, I champ, love long champ. Whatever. I love them so much. Yeah, which is a nice nylon tote, but it's, they're like a hundred bucks. And this one has right. lasted me like a decade. Oh, they last forever and they have inside pockets. There's nothing better than long champ. But like a yeah. Birkin bag, if I treated my Birkin bag the way that I treat my current bag, with just like half <laughs> granola bars and like <laughs> wadded up receipts, Oh, yeah, there, there was one episode of the house. I was like, I want to say it was uh, Beverly Hills, where the woman's purse was so expensive. She had a little raincoat for it. She had like a little purse raincoat, <laughs> and she came to dinner with one of the other housewives. And she and the other housewife wasn't like, "What the hell is that?" She was like, "Oh, I see you have the per the raincoat." <laughs> it's like so normal for them. Isn't it a superstition to put your purse on the floor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I actually, one yeah. of the big pieces of swag that I got at an RT was a hook for your purse where you open it up and then hang it off the edge of the table and there's a hook underneath to hold your purse. Totally worked. You can hang your bag anywhere. That's actually good swag, I will say. Oh, that's, that's the thing I miss most about swag. Romantic Times, yeah. the convention, was the swag. Yeah. The swag was serious business. Yeah, that's some good stuff. Have yeah. you thought about wedding dresses as swag? <laughs> I feel like it might be not cost efficient, but I. I mean, <laughs> there's there's ways. Or little ones. Yeah, little, little tiny, tiny wedding ones. dresses. Say yes to the yes, dress. There you go, people. 
That'd be cute. Your sister would come in your house and be like, I have to leave now. Oh, God. There's too many wedding yeah. dresses in this house and I have to go. I'm so sorry for her. Would you please tell her that we are so sorry she got a bad edit? Because she got a bad edit. I will tell her. I remember when we watched it, Amanda, I remember both of us going, did they edit her that way? Because that's just like, what? Yeah, I feel like most people wouldn't bring someone to this experience if they had any sort of like rocky relationship. They would bring people that like they love and know and trust. Yeah. And wouldn't be jerks about the experience. Yeah. Well, I can say when I did the sort of say yes to the dress with my sister-in-law, there was a dress she really liked. And I was like, this is very impractical. You can't move around because it was very form fitting. And all the, and I'm like, do you want to dance? Like, do you want to move around? Do you want to be able to walk? You want to go to the bathroom? I will say yeah. though, at the reception to sort of break the ice, we, we with the bride's permission, my husband was a groomsman. And before we were introduced, we switched clothes. So he wore my bridesmaid's dress and I wore his tux. Oh, my mother-in-law funny. still does not speak of this. She does not like that this happened. She does not speak of it. Oh, no. <laughs> but first of all, my dress looked really good on him. I was mad I had to give back the tux because I have so many po- Do you have any idea how many pockets men have? Do you have any idea? I had pockets inside, outside, on the sides, in the back. I had the jacket had like 10 and it was a rental it was our rented tux and it had more more pockets than I've ever had in my did life. Did you check the pockets before you gave it back? You yes, we did because the rental okay. also cost more than the dress, which I own. <laughs> See, but that'd be such... Okay, if we had what's in your purse as a show, what's in your pockets as a man would be so boring. Oh, God. It would just wallet be like, keys. Wallet. Yeah. And we'd be like... What you Candy. <laughs> Random business card from a gas station that closed in 1982. Yeah. 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 But I feel like my brother now, even though he's like military, so it might just be wallet still at this point. He has that like crossbody, like chest bag. You know what I mean? It's literally a fanny pack that it just goes over the chest now. When did those come back in style? I keep seeing people with fanny packs across their body like a bandolier. And I'm like, wait a minute. Look, I bought a fanny pack when I went to Disney. Loved it. But I'm a double G. No fanny pack in the world. <laughs> He's crossing like, the gauntlet there now. No, and it's just going to do that thing where like purse straps that go right between the boobs and just make them uh, look even bigger. So it's like, you know what? Around the hips, it's fine. And it was great and comfortable and I loved it. Yeah, they're back. The fanny pack's back. It's been 10 years since you were on the show and you have written more than 30 romance novels. What are you working on now? What is your newest release? My news release actually comes out in a week or two, the 24th. It's called The Wallflower Win. It is the last book in my latest series, um, which is, I call it The Whitmore Lens. I actually did the whole series as a nod to Judith McNaught, who is my favorite of all time. Oh, I love um, that. Rome, She's yeah, wonderful. Her. her books were so, so my gateway. Yes, yes. Love her, <laughs> love her, love her. And she, so, so. All the books, it's four books, and all the books are kind of, you'll, anyone who's read all of her uh, regencies would, will see little kind of Easter eggs for all of her stuff in there, like names and presents and just little things I took from all of her books because I love her so much. I adore Judith McNaught, but there's one book of hers that I cannot read because the hero has the same first and last name as uh, the person I dated throughout high school. Oh, oh. Ian Thornton is the character name. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. That's oh, wow. true. That, is, that was my high school boyfriend. Lovely guy. Not a, a horrific memory at all, but that's just too much for me. Too much of a similarity, first and last name. I mean, <laughs> so like, yeah, that's a lot that to one. take in. I get it. I get <laughs> and yeah, also, I, like, I just, My name is Sarah. There are a lot of people named Sarah. And I admit I will struggle with a romance heroine named Sarah. At one point, I got a um, a, a digital galley of a book and it was a PDF and it was a pretty high demand author. And so they had put a watermark across the text, Sarah's copy. And I was like, well, I can't read this. There's there's copy. So I did a I, I, I exported the PDF and I removed the name Sarah. But it turns out there was a major character named Sarah. So after I was done, the book made no sense. 
<laughs> like I was like, who the hell is talking? Oh shit. <laughs> you removed all Sarah's. I removed all Sarah's except me. It was a very powerful moment in my life. <laughs> I love that. I've never a found a Valerie one. as the heroine. The Valerie's always tend to be like the bitchy bad villain <laughs> for some reason. I've found. I'm like, what the what? <laughs> The you mistress character. Not, Judith McNaught has an evil Valerie. She does. She does, she does. She does have she an does. evil Valerie. Yes, she does. <laughs> well, listen, I don't want to tell you your business, but you are a romance <laughs> author and there's no one stopping you from naming a character after yourself, especially after all of that nonsense about how, you know, on Say Yes to the Dress, you wanted to be your characters and, you know, she needs to come <laughs> back to it. Earth. Oh, me. yeah. Like they, they really <laughs> made you sound at times as if you were very much living in a fantasy world. So why not make a heroine Valerie? I, you know, I say I, go for it. I didn't name her Valerie, but I, I've i written one contemporary no, uh, novel and I that heroine is not named Valerie, but she's very heavily based on me and everyone hated her. So I was like, <laughs> obviously, I'm a horrible person. But uh, just she's OCD and kind of picky and everything's in her planner. She loves to do lists. Like, I really based her on me, and everyone's like, you're heroin, and that book is awful. But otherwise, it was a good <laughs> So I'm not doing that again. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> is that hiring Mr. Darcy? Yes. Oh, yes. no. <laughs> Even my agent was like, no, no, not her. I was like, okay. <laughs> keep it to myself then that was kind of me <laughs> but i actually am about to write the sequel to hiring mr darcy so i'm gonna make a way nicer heroine <laughs> and you can just make the heroine of the first book if she's in the second book you can do whatever you want that's right, that's right. change your name to valerie become a reality tv star it'll be great <laughs> <laughs> so what books are you reading that you want to tell people about Oh, okay. I've been on the biggest kick all summer and, and into the fall here on like hockey romance and somehow, okay, if you would have told me I would have liked football YA, I would have told you that you're crazy, but I've been reading all <laughs> football because I don't, I don't like football. I couldn't care less. It's just, it's shocking to me that I've gotten into these books, but I've been reading um, Jennifer Bond. I read some T.L. Swan. I just, it's these, I just read the whole series one after another of like hockey and football. And um, I've been loving it. So yeah, Jennifer Bond's got a whole series. um, The one that's sticking out in my mind is called Catching Quinn, but they're all kind of that same name. And I love them. They're really good. Really well done. One thing I love about books like that is that I call them um, armpit cover books because the cover (laughs) models are always like this. Yes. Like you can't have a football <laughs> hero on the cover unless he's like flexing his armpits at you. Like it's very yes. important. Yes. The the pit pose is 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 a big genre signal there. That's a perfect way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Pit pose. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Where can people find you? If you're giving away a wedding dress or not, where can you people find you? <laughs> currently giving away a wedding dress but everyone can find me at the uh, valeriebowmanbooks.com www.valeriebowmanbooks.com and i'm of course on facebook i'm kind of off x or twitter or whatever it used to be called i am on threads now and instagram and it's all at valerie g bowman are my handles there so yeah this was fun i love doing the cover of uh, rt and it's so fun to talk about uh the olden days of <laughs> thank you i can't believe it's been that long i know it's yeah. almost 10 years one of the things amanda remarked on when we did the first one was how this really was like a celebrity magazine just for us yes Loved it. like all the names on the cover instead of being celebrities they're just like us it was like valerie bowman and cheryl and kenyon like wow yes. this magazine was celebrities just for us so you got to be a cover model I missed it so much. Yeah, there was. I'm. I was so glad they didn't want me on. The, like they just put my <laughs> book, and I was. They did ask if like, you could tell them what you'd prefer, but I was. Oh, like, that's interesting. I do, not, I do not want my mug on the cover. <laughs> I know a lot of people have done that, but I'm just not the type who want. I was like, no, please. The book, please. We actually <laughs> talked about that because I noticed some of them have the author photo, and then some of them have the book cover. And I'm guessing yeah. as a marketing tool, having the book cover image reinforced is much more effective than having your picture because people are going to see your book somewhere else be like, oh, that was on the cover. 
Yeah, I think if you're Nora Roberts, you can uh, hop right on the cover of anything and people will be like, oh, Nora. But uh, I yeah. was like, it's it's a win-win for me because I'd rather you see my book cover and I don't want to be on the cover of my actual face. Well, thank you yeah, so much for that. doing this. And thank you for the side trip down Real Housewives memory lane. That was very fun. <laughs> love, love a Real Housewives talk. Call me when you start your, um, what's in your purse? Because I got some stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, absolutely. I'll, I'll, you'll, and I, I also want your sister to come on so we can give her the nicest edit ever. Make her seem like the most supportive, <laughs> oh, love loving, that. glorious. Oh, she'll be the best side character, oh, well. sequel bait character on the show hands down <laughs> oh i love it yeah she's a big romance novel fan too. And that brings us to the end of this week's episode. Thank you so much to Valerie Bowman for answering my email and for coming on the show to talk about her appearance on a reality television program almost 10 years ago. I have a picture of her wedding and the dress that she wore in the show notes and at smartbitchestrashybooks.com slash podcast under episode number 586. Do not miss it. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful picture. And I will have links to all of the books that we talked about and all of the places you can find Valerie. And of course, a link to watch the full episode if you are interested in saying a nearly 10 year old ish episode of Say Yes to the Dress Atlanta. <laughs> wow podcasting is really wild sometimes. I always end with a bad joke and this week I would never leave you hanging. It's almost Halloween so this is the perfect joke. How does Dracula order his coffee? Give up? How does Dracula order his coffee? Decoffinated. <laughs> a secondary joke. How do you know if a vampire is sick? Well, they're coffin. I hope you have a wonderful Halloween and get all the best candy. On behalf of everyone here, we wish you the very best of reading and the very best of candy. We will see you back here next week. Smart Podcast Trashy Books is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. You can find more outstanding podcasts to subscribe to at frolic.media slash podcasts.